So we've seen that synthetic division is a very useful tool. It can help us divide polynomials, and then by doing that, it helps us factor polynomials and find real zeros. Not only that, if the remainder is not zero, it helps us find a function value. Well, another thing that synthetic division can do is it can help us find bounds on real zeros. And what we, what we mean by that is exactly this. Synthetic division can help us find an interval a to b that contains all the real roots of a polynomial p of x. So what we mean is here, if I find this a value and this b value, all the real roots of p of x are somewhere in between. All of them. Okay, so now how can we possibly do that? It comes from synthetic division. So let me give you an example and I'll show you what this means. Okay, so here I want to find an upper bound and a lower bound of the real roots of f, which is xx cubed plus 6x squared plus 11x plus 6. Now what we mean by an upper bound is we mean a number like this b. Now it could be that you find something out here. Well, that still works, right? Because all the real roots are still in between a and this new value, we'll call it c. And then the lower bound, or a lower bound, we mean this value a. Okay, now depending on what you pick, again, you could have different answers, but all you're trying to say is that you've trapped all the real numbers in between these two values. Okay, now how do we do this? Through synthetic division. And really, at this point, you just kind of test to see what may work. So for example, I'm going to test 1 here. And at this moment, you're not even sure how that even helps. And I'll try to clarify. All right, so synthetic division, we say 1, 1x one cubed, 6x squared, 11x, 6. Okay, now I bring down the 1. Now, if you don't recall how to do synthetic division, I have a video on synthetic division and topics related to this, such as the rational root theorem and Descartes' rule of signs. Make sure you see those. Okay, so we here we bring down the 1. We say 1 times 1 is 1. Then we add, so that's 7. 7 times 1 is 7. So 11 plus 7 is 18. 18 plus 1 is 18. And 18 plus 6, we get 24. Okay, now in previous topics, this is disappointing to us because this last number is not a 0. If the last number is a 0, we have found a root, but it's not a 0. Okay, but what it does tell me is notice that these are all positive. So if it's all positive, then what that means is I have found one of these upper bounds. This implies that every real root is less than 1. Okay, now what about an, a lower bound? What happens when you find a lower bound? So let me show you an example of that. This time we're going to test negative 6. Okay, so let's test this out. I bring down the 1. 1 times negative 6 is negative 6. Add those to get 0. 0 times negative 6 is 0, so I add to get 11. 11 times negative 6 is negative 66, so I add to get negative 60. Okay, again, that would be disappointing because negative 60 is not 0. But notice here, the signs go plus. Now, a 0 can be considered plus or negative. In this case, I want to make it negative. I'll show you why in a second. Plus, negative. The signs alternate. So that means that we have found a lower bound. So in general, if your signs alternate like we did here, then that means that all your real roots are going to be bigger than that number. Okay, now the zero was, we chose it to be a negative. What, it was, what if it was supposed to be positive? So in this case, when we get a zero, it's a wild card. It can be either positive or negative. So here, since it can be either positive or negative. I'll let it be negative. I get alternating signs. That means I know that negative 6, again, is a lower bound. Okay, so that means that all of my real roots, then, are between negative 6 and positive 1. There's the, an interval that would satisfy what we're looking for. Now, how do we actually find what they are? So let's look at another example, and we're going to be revisiting the rational root theorem. Okay, so now we're going to find the roots of this polynomial. And remember, the rational root theorem says if I have a fraction p over q that divides, that is a root of this function, the p, the numerator, divides the constant term. So that's going to be plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, 3, and 6. Those are the things that divide out 6. Now the denominator, q, is going to divide the leading coefficient. So since my leading coefficient is 1, that's just plus or minus 1. So the things that are possible candidates to be roots of this function look like this, negative 6, 
negative three, negative two, negative one, and then the positive versions of those. Now wait a minute though, didn't we just say that all of our real roots are between negative six and one? We said they're all between negative six and one, and actually we tested both of those already, and neither one of them had zero as a remainder, so the negative six and one are not included in this answer. So that automatically eliminates negative six, one, and since two, three, and six are bigger than one, all of those get eliminated as well. That means negative three, negative two, and negative one are the only candidates. Let's see if any of those work. So I'm gonna do synthetic division. Let's just pick negative one for no particular reason, just a starting point. Okay, so I bring down the one, I get negative one, add, give me five, times negative one's a negative five, add to get six, this is looking pretty good because look, now I get a remainder of zero. That means I have found a root. And so my function then factors as x minus negative one, which is x plus one, times x squared plus five x plus six. Again, I got that from my quotient here. And I can factor that because that's a quadratic. And I think I already have a hint of what it's gonna look like. Two things that multiply to give me six and add to give me five. How about three and two? And notice that these are the exact three roots that I get here. So the bounds on the roots, in this example in particular, really helped me factor it. It helped me save a lot of time eliminating possible things that could be rational roots and helped me quickly get to the answer. I hope this work makes sense. I hope when you get to play with this, you can see how it is useful. It can save you a lot of time. If you have any questions on it, I'd be glad to help. And thank you for watching. <laughs>